Welcome back! Now that I've covered the fundamentals of Happy Wheels speedrunning, I'm going to discuss the various categories of records that are tracked within the speedrunning community, and I'll cover a bit of history about how certain categories have developed and progressed over the years. Timestamps are... somewhere. Most players of Happy Wheels have engaged in speedrunning in some capacity, whether or not they choose to call it by that word. If you've ever completed a level and saved your replay, you've created a speedrun. It may not be a very fast run, but the game still displays your run on the leaderboards. Other players can view your gameplay and determine very easily where you stand on the world rankings by counting from the top of the list. I personally hold first place rankings in quite a few Happy Wheels levels, but most of them have a few thousand plays at most. I wouldn't be able to beat the record replay on any featured level. I don't label myself as a speedrunner, and speedrunning isn't even my major area of interest in Happy Wheels. That would be level design. I may be more skilled than 99% of Happy Wheels players, but I'm nowhere near the level of top runners like Ewan and Corti. Happy Wheels may be unique among video games for the sheer number of recorded speedruns that exist. I can say pretty confidently that more people have played Super Mario Bros. than have played Happy Wheels, and Mario's speedrunning community has a much larger viewer base, and their records are generally held in higher regard than those in Happy Wheels. But Happy Wheels has far more recorded speedrun attempts, which are submitted by far more individual players. The largest organized database of Super Mario Bros. speedruns is on speedrun.com. Counting obsoleted runs, there are more than 4,400 submitted runs in just the any percent category. They range in length from under 5 minutes to more than 6 hours. That is a huge number of runs, but it could be a lot more. That only represents a tiny, tiny fraction of all of the completed runs that players have played over the years. The great majority of gameplay in the game is not recorded, because the game does not support any method to natively record gameplay. To record a playthrough, you need an external video capture device, or an emulator that records inputs. All of these external factors require additional time and effort to set up, so most players don't use them. It's only content creators and individuals who have a sustained interest in speedrunning who record a large portion of their playthroughs. Now, let's look at the replay browser on the most played Happy Wheels level, the Combine 2.1. This level received over 400 submitted replays in the first 19 days after its release. Now, not all of those are completed runs, but that's still an insane number of submissions for such a short length of time. And most of them are pretty fast, too. Because the replay system is so easy to use, and it requires no premeditated setup other than logging into your account, players who would otherwise have no interest in speedrunning are willing to submit their runs. There are so many that the replay browser can't even load all of them in a single query. It only loads up to 400 results at a time. I'm going to give a conservative guess that this level has several tens of thousands of submitted replays at this time. Most of them are just extremely difficult to find. You'd have to comb through each individual player's profile to find them. And that's not even a very high rate of submission, considering that the level has over 99 million plays. Even the Trackmania games don't have nearly this many speedrun submissions on each of their most popular levels, and those games also have an easy-to-use online system to submit replays. Of course, the speedrunning scene in Happy Wheels isn't exclusively relegated to replays hosted on TotalDrickFace.com. Like most popular games, it has a significant presence on YouTube and on Speedrun.com. The difference is that far fewer speedruns are recorded on these platforms. Most Happy Wheels players haven't gone the extra steps to get video recordings of their replays and to upload them to YouTube. But those few replays that are uploaded are generally more accessible in their accurate form for most viewers. As you've probably gathered from... 
everything that I've just said, individual level runs are the main area of interest among speedrunners of Happy Wheels. That's actually pretty standard in most games that have an in-game timer that shows a time at the end of each level. In the very early days of games like GoldenEye and Mario Kart 64, speedrunners only kept track of the times for individual level records. Just noting down the time that appears at the end of each level is easier and more consistent than starting a timer at the beginning of a run and stopping it at the end. And of course the community has to agree on when exactly to start and stop the timer. Do you start at the title screen or the level selector and it's a whole process. But there are more fundamental reasons why individual level runs are so central in Happy Wheels speedrunning rather than full game runs. Firstly, the main method of submitting runs in Happy Wheels has always been to save the run as a replay and each replay only covers a single level. Secondly, Happy Wheels doesn't really have a linear game campaign in the way that most games do. In most games, you start with some level that the developers have identified as level 1. Then you progress through one or more possible sequences of levels to get to the final level. And when you beat that one, the game is considered beaten. Then the credits roll, usually. See, Happy Wheels doesn't have that. There's no linear progression from beginning to end. All of the levels are unlocked and available to you once you open the game. And the game never really ends. There's no final level. In fact, the number of levels increases every day. The great majority of levels are user-made, and there are millions of them by now. It's simply not possible for any person to beat every level in Happy Wheels. There are several reasons why this is, not least of which is that many levels don't even have a win condition. I mean, you could at least try to play all of them. Maybe you'd have to search for them in alphabetical order. If anyone wants to try that, let me know how it goes. For the purposes of the speedrun.com categories, the player community have come to their own understanding of what full game means. There are two full game categories that are currently recognized. The single most respected record in the Happy Wheels speedrunning community is probably Demo Percent. In this category, the player must complete the nine levels of the version 1.1 demo of Happy Wheels. This category may not look very competitive at first, considering that only five runners have their times listed on speedrun.com. I don't know why that is. A quick YouTube search will show you that there are many dozens of submissions going back several years. As the name would suggest, this category is played in the demo version of Happy Wheels. This is a version of the game that Jim released early in the game's history. It contains nine curated levels, made by Jim and by other users. Only the first three characters are playable in the demo, though Effective Shopper appears on the character Select Screen as an enticement for players to play the full game. Not a very appealing enticement, in my opinion. Jim allowed this demo version to be republished on several game hosting websites, including Congregate and Unblocked Games, to advertise the game and attract attention to the full version on TotalJerkFace.com. I think that the first place where I ever saw Happy Wheels was actually on UnblockedGames.com. I was in middle school, and I saw some other kids playing it on a school computer during homeroom. I remember thinking that the wheelchair guy looked funny. Since all nine levels of the demo version are contained within the Swift file, it is possible to download the game and play it offline. That's what many players have done. I think that it's good that the demo version has been accepted as a common standard in the speedrunning community. It provides a fair, even ground for all players, and it minimizes the differences in gameplay that may arise due to players playing in different versions of the game. The demo is the 1.1 version of the game. It hasn't received any updates. It's always preserved as that one version, and players can always play the exact version at various points in time. Unfortunately, it's not possible to save replays within the demo version. Jim reserved that feature for the full game. That's not a huge problem, though. Full game runs are timed in real time, rather than using the game's built-in timers. Players wouldn't want to save their replays during a full game game run because it would put them at a disadvantage of several seconds to have to click all of the buttons. The oldest video of a Happy Wheels demo speedrun that I could find is by the runner Kninjas. He published this video run in January of 2017. He completed seven levels in six minutes and three seconds. 
It seems that he considered this run as more of a proof of concept rather than an actual leaderboard submission. This run would not be accepted on the leaderboards of speedrun.com, especially considering the specific set of rules that the community has adopted. Kninjas gave up on finishing It Keeps Happening and skipped over it after only a few tries. He chose to completely skip over Gut Bus and encouraged future runners to do the same. His reasoning for this decision was... bizarre. He claims that there's no way to consistently play the level because grabbing alters the physics. Now, I've played the demo version, and I've seen firsthand that the grabbing controls are pretty wonky. It's quite challenging to make the character go exactly where you want him to go. But to say that grabbing alters the physics to such an extent that the level isn't viable for speedrunning, that's just ridiculous. It's definitely possible to consistently grab onto the bus and to shift around your weight in such a way that you can avoid being destroyed by the wrecking ball. It just takes practice and principle. I'm thinking that the real reason why he didn't want to play Gut Bus is that there's a lot of unpredictability to the level. If you don't know how to escape from the bus at the beginning, this level definitely requires a lot of grinding to get a good time. And to get a good time in the other eight levels on top of this one requires even more grinding. But he didn't say that, of course. Grinding the same few levels over and over is standard practice in speedrunning, and Kninjas didn't want to sound uncommitted. So blame the physics, or whatever. As I will explain in a later video, the current world record strategy on Gut Bus doesn't even involve grabbing the bus. Also, Kninjas had no problem playing Snowy Mountain, the level that requires a lot more grabbing than any other level in the demo. So... I don't know what's up with that. Later in 2017, Kninjas uploaded a more serious run, with a respectable time of 4.52, and he declared that as the world record at the time. That video got a fair amount of attention and notoriety in the Happy Wheels community when he released it. He still chose to skip Gut Bus, so that run wouldn't be accepted either. When looking at the history of Demo% percent speedruns, I can actually go back even farther than Kninjas' videos from 2017. This is the oldest reference that I could find to a ranking in the Demo% percent category. According to this post on Speedruns Live from October of 2014, a player called iCup Let's Play completed every level in the demo in 30 minutes and 22 seconds. Unfortunately, there is no surviving video archive of the playthrough. This time may sound a lot slower than the current world record time of 3 minutes and 11 seconds, which is held by the prominent Happy Wheels speedrunner Dre. And yeah, iCup's run was definitely slower. Some of the time-saving techniques that Dre has implemented probably weren't well known in 2014. I'll identify some of Dre's strategies in the next video. However, the disparity in times may be a bit misleading. From the very limited amount of information that is available on Speedruns Live, I get the indication that this was a live, competitive event in 2014. iCup competed against a player called MLJS9800, who finished second. Some live competitive speedrunning events use a timing standard that is different from the standard used for leaderboards, like those on speedrun.com. Firstly, I'm going to explain leaderboard timing. In most games, the timer only counts the time that it takes to play the required levels in a single continuous run. According to the game-specific rules listed on speedrun.com, timing starts when the player clicks Play Now in the first level of their chosen sequence, and it ends when the win banner appears on the final level. The player is allowed to stop the game completely at any time, and to start a new run from the beginning. A player may choose to restart the run if they make a major error that costs several seconds and would make it difficult for them to set a new personal best time. In fact, it's common for runners to include the last few seconds of their previous attempt in the video proof of their personal best speedrun attempt. In Adam's personal best run, I can see that he resets the clock at the beginning of his best run of that day, and he restarts playing the whole sequence of nine levels, starting with Trap Track. 
In a live competitive setting, players usually aren't allowed to reset the timer. There's a single timer that starts when both contestants start playing the game, and a moderator takes note of the time that has elapsed so far when each individual contestant wins the game. If either contestant has to restart the game from the beginning for any reason, the timer doesn't stop. All of the time that the player had spent on the previous unsuccessful run is counted towards their full time playing the game in competition. I'll give an example in another game, Minecraft. This is the London Minecon 2015 Speedrun Championship. It was a live competition between four contestants. The runner in the top right is Illumina. In the first few minutes on this particular map, he was ahead of the other three runners. Unfortunately, he hit some lava and died, making him have to restart the map from the spawn point, and setting him several minutes behind the others at that point. As you may see, the timer doesn't reset when he restarts the map. All four players are on a common timer. That is a common setup in live competitions. A similar scenario probably played out in iCup's run. If he was playing the Happy Wheels demo for 30 minutes, and the demo only contains 9 levels, that tells me that he had to reset at least one individual level very many times. He may have started with the level that was most difficult for him, which is a common strategy in speedrunning. I'm just making up a possible scenario here. Maybe he started with Trap Track, and he kept dying on the crushers near the end of the level. Maybe he had to reset the level 11 times before finally getting through on the 12th attempt, and all of those resets cost him 10 minutes. Then he got through each remaining level on a much quicker pace, with only a few resets on the more difficult levels. If Speedruns Live were listing times based on the same rule set used by Speedrun.com, those first 10 minutes of unsuccessful attempts would not be counted. So, as far back as 2014, the record for a single continuous run of all 9 levels in the Happy Wheels demo was less than or equal to 30 minutes and 22 seconds. Unless if someone rediscovers a video of that competition, it's probably impossible to determine a time more precise than that. We don't know just how much of that time was wasted on unsuccessful runs. iCup Let's Play would later participate in multiple other speedrunning competitions, of which video recordings have survived. In 2016, he participated in this run, in the bingo category, of the game Banjo-Tooie. Now, all of what I've discussed so far is relevant to the Flash versions of Happy Wheels. As you all should know by now, the Flash version is no longer playable online on TotalDrickFace.com. They've replaced it with a newer JavaScript port that runs without the need for a Flash Player plugin. The community of Speedrun.com actually records records separately between the two versions. They decided that the differences in physics between the versions are substantial enough that separate leaderboards are necessary. I don't know that runs are necessarily any faster in JavaScript. I haven't done any in-depth side-by-side -side comparisons of the frame data of similar runs recorded in the two different versions, and I don't think that anyone else has attempted that either. Maybe it will be possible to do that in the future, as more JavaScript replays are submitted and players start to consistently achieve times that are at or faster than the individual level records that have been achieved in Flash. But right now, there simply aren't enough data for me to make general statements about how the port affects timing in the game. I just know that the community decided to keep those runs separate, and that's how it is. Just playing the game, you probably wouldn't think that the differences in physics are enough to warrant a separate leaderboard. The controls feel exactly the same, as far as I'm able to tell. I'm going to be honest, the speedrunning community in the JavaScript port of Happy Wheels is pretty much dead. And it's only even existed for like, eight months. If you look at the individual level leaderboards on speedrun.com, most of them don't even show a single submitted run for the JavaScript port. Like, we all knew that this was going to happen eventually. Happy Wheels is not a new game. It's well past its prime. It's been steadily losing players since 2015. But the game's player base has just dropped off of a cliff since the death of Flash. I don't know why. 
It's not like it's a completely different game now. It plays the same as the older version, and it's on the same website, as always. I think that anyone who enjoyed the Flash version should be able to play the JavaScript port just fine. Maybe lots of players were turned off in the first few weeks of the port, when the graphics were honestly really terrible. The frame rate was very poor, and the game actually ran at 480p. That is no joke. Like, what is this, 2010? Maybe there will be a resurgence of people playing the port and submitting speedruns. I hope. There are still a lot of optimizations left to be found in the game. It seems that a large number of players have actually migrated to speedrunning the mobile ports of Happy Wheels. The port released on iPhone in 2015 and on Android in 2020, and it still has a significant online speedrunning community, more so than the JavaScript port. Even Ewan111, the runner with the most individual level records, has put a fair amount of time into the mobile port. Every mobile level has at least a few runners, and the first one has 53 listed. I don't plan to go too deep in detail about the mobile ports, because I plan to make a full review if I ever complete this retrospective series. Anyway, none of the user-made levels in the level browser are playable on mobile. Jim's team made a short sequence of exclusive levels that are to show off the mechanics of each playable character. And the game design is limited in some ways, because the controls of the mobile port are much less versatile than in the web version. These on-screen buttons simply don't give you the control that you would have with a keyboard. As in the web version, individual level runs are the community's main area of interest. Players have identified a good number of time-saving optimizations it's possible to use level hazards to move the character, very similarly to how they work in the web version. Unfortunately, there's no way to save replays in the mobile port. You can view a replay after completing a level, but there's no natively supported way to save the input data so that you can view it later. The cache is cleared when you exit the level. I understand that the developers didn't want to make a whole new online platform to save and share replays just for the mobile version of the game, when they were still supporting the Flash version as the main version of Happy Wheels. But they could have implemented some system to save the inputs locally on your phone, or even to convert the replay to a video file within the application and save it to your phone's gallery. That would have been very easy to implement. The mobile port is seriously lagging behind a Flash game from 2010 in features. They should definitely fix that in a future update. So, the only way to share your run in the mobile port is to record your phone's screen and to share the video file. While this isn't a huge requirement, it definitely increases the amount of effort and planning required for new players to get into speedrunning on mobile. You can record during your actual gameplay or while viewing the replay. They look the same. The mobile ports also have full game categories. For most playable characters in the port, there are 15 specially designed levels, but Pogo Stickman only has 5 as of now. If you complete every one of a character's levels in a single run, you are considered to have completed a run in that character's category. These categories aren't competitive at all. As of now, there are only two runs listed on speedrun.com. One for Irresponsible Dad, and one for Wheelchair Guy. Neither is very well optimized. Both contain several level restarts each. Something good that I will say about the full game runs on mobile. I like that I'm actually able to see the runner's inputs on screen. In Flash and JavaScript, the inputs generally aren't visible during full game runs because the runners don't view their replays. Just as someone who is interested in how more optimal strategies are developed, I would like for the inputs to be recorded. But in the mobile port, the inputs are automatically visible on screen, because the buttons appear on screen, and they increase in size when pressed. There's no need to view the replay, or to use any external program to record the inputs. Everything that I've covered so far is about speedruns that players have played in real time. While those are the main type of speedrunning that is recognized as a form of entertainment, they're definitely not the only type. Tool-assisted speedruns are very interesting as their own distinct form of entertainment, and they are also very useful in the development of strategies that players can implement in real-time runs. 
I am not currently aware of the existence of any tool-assisted speedruns in Happy Wheels, whether recorded in the demo version or in any other version of the game. That's definitely an untapped area of opportunity that may, someday, emerge in the Happy Wheels community. Being able to make tool-assisted runs may allow runners to discover new strategies and optimizations that they can learn and use to break records in unassisted categories. Happy Wheels has very complex physics, and slight changes in inputs can make a big difference in how the character moves and how quickly he gets to the level goal. Now, before I get into this, I'll admit that I don't know a whole lot about how tool-assisted runs of Flash games are actually made. I've seen a few runs made in games like Super Stacker 2 and Super Mario Flash, but I don't think that either of those examples are particularly relevant. Both of those games are fundamentally different from Happy Wheels. So pardon me if a lot of what I say in this section is extremely vague. I don't want to say anything that's rooted too firmly in my understanding of how tasks are made in games that run on other platforms. And I doubt that any other Happy Wheels content creator could really be very much more knowledgeable than me in this area anyway. Making a TAS in Happy Wheels is uncharted territory. I don't think that anyone has actually done it on record. So if anyone ever attempts it, there's a lot that we're going to have to figure out as a community. Anyway... Going off of my own impressions, I imagine that the process is more difficult than making a TAS of a game that runs on a retro console, like the NES. There exist a great number of ready-made tools for NES games. There are very well-programmed emulators that perfectly represent the logic of the operating system, and that allow the user to load save states and to edit inputs frame by frame. See, Happy Wheels doesn't have that. I don't know of any program that can perfectly emulate how Flash Player runs on a computer while also implementing features like save states and frame advancement. It may be possible to make such a program, but I don't think that anyone is really actively working on such a project. Happy Wheels is probably even more difficult to emulate in comparison to most Flash games. It has a variable frame rate, and the frame rate is affected by various factors both internal and external to the contents of the level. If a program does not perfectly emulate the effects of lag, a time sequence of inputs may become desynchronized with the game. The physics of Happy Wheels also play out slightly differently on different computer operating systems. That's another factor that Tassers would probably have to consider. Even if someone develops a custom tool to play Happy Wheels, it probably won't be usable for levels that are only available online. And that's the great majority of Happy Wheels levels. Emulators generally require that you have a version of the game saved locally on your computer. Maybe tasks would have to be relegated to just the nine levels of the Happy Wheels demo, which you can download locally as a Swift file. Even if it's just that, I would love to see a TAS-optimized run of the demo. With the strategies that are currently known, a knowledgeable task creator could easily make a sub-three-minute run. Maybe it would even be significantly faster than that, depending on what they can discover. But let's take it for granted that someone can figure out all of those problems. Someone more knowledgeable than myself on the subject of tool-assisted speedruns. Happy Wheels has the potential to have a much more knowledgeable TAS community in comparison to most games. There are already several players, not necessarily speedrunners, who have very deep knowledge of the game's mechanics that they've cultivated through thousands of hours of building levels in the game's native level editor. Players have full access to the complete tool set that Jim used to develop his own levels, and that every level creator after him has used. We can use this level editor to build very specific scenarios that allow us to learn more information about how shapes interact in the game. I don't know what exactly would be the best use of this tool set for a tasser, because I'm not very knowledgeable in this field, but I'm going to make up a simple example. One could probably make a custom scenario to determine the fastest possible speed that each player character can achieve in pixels per frame under any set of circumstances. One could add in and individually test various parameters that affect speed, such as a boost pane or a wrecking ball that strikes the character. 
If you combine this with a tool that allows you to load game states and edit inputs frame by frame, you can create an even greater wealth of knowledge about the character's speed. You'd be able to make multiple runs that include slightly different inputs, and see how the differences in inputs may affect the differences in time, respecting when the character reaches a certain point. Players of most games don't have access to anything like this. Most games don't include the actual level design tools that the developers use to build the game. If players of Super Mario Bros. want to make a custom level to test how a certain collision works under specific circumstances, they can't do that in the original unmodified version of the game. They'd have to make a ROM hack or something. And ROM hacks are cool! They allow players to more easily discover a lot of details about how a game fundamentally works. There's a popular Super Mario Bros. ROM hack made by a tasser named Sock Folder. He edited the ROM's programming so that, instead of a score and a coin count, the game displays information about Mario's precise position and speed. In this video, Sock Folder uses this information to demonstrate a viable setup for a flagpole glitch. Players of Super Mario 64 have also figured out a lot of information about the game's physics by making ROM hacks and custom emulator plugins, and by parsing through the lines of the game's programming. To give one simple example, Tassers determined that Mario's speed increases by a very specific factor when the player performs a backward long jump. The point is that all of those are tools that players had to program on their own. Usually, a TAS community doesn't have access to tools like those until the community is already somewhat large and somewhat organized in their sharing of information. Only then, usually, do tassers have the direction and the motivation to develop their own custom game-specific tools. In Happy Wheels, it's a different situation. We don't need to program any custom tools to determine precise information about the physical constants in the simulated game world, because we already have access to a very useful resource in the level editor. So if a substantial TAS community ever does emerge in Happy Wheels, and I think that it should, there's the potential that players will be able to discover very many optimizations very quickly because of the resources that already exist and their optimizations will build on top of ones that we already know from unassisted runs. Well, that is all for today. I've covered a lot. In the next part, I will be doing a full in-depth speedrun analysis of the current world record in the demo percent category held by the runner Dre. I've been looking forward to this coming video. Be ready for it. Goodbye.